Hey, Mr. Ben, how you doing? Oh, pretty good, Mr. Baldwin. How are you? I'm doing great. We're talking about one of my favorite topics here, groundwater and water availability here. Uh, it's very important in the world we live in. Absolutely. So let's check out some learning targets. You guys are actually going to be uh, diagramming the hydrologic cycle. Making a picture? Yep, absolutely. You guys have done this before, so it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, connections between all the spheres in the water cycle. And then diagramming showing the Earth's water around mm -hmm. and how where groundwater fig fits in. Mm -hmm. And then why is groundwater important, pretty much. All right, well, let's get right to it. Yep. Ooh, the water cycle. It's like a bicycle, kind of. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so where does like the water cycle start? Is there really a starting point? I think that's like you know the wheel on a bicycle. There's no one way down, yeah. so you just can jump in. Yeah, so it's constantly going just about everywhere. Well, right? let's start up. We'll start at the top, sure. Sounds yeah. like a good Clouds, place. right? So we have clouds, and we have condensation going in a cloud. Okay? okay. So that's going from gaseous water to liquid water. Okay. And it's just like the condensation on the outside of your glass. Uh, when it sweats. Mm-hmm. And then once you get condensation, another shation, like a precipitation. Mm hmm Okay, so enough of it gets together, it falls down. Absolutely. And then once well, it hits the ground... It can do a lot of things. Yeah. So one thing, if it flows over the surface... It's going to be called, like, runoff. Right. It could sink in. That's another shun word, infiltration. Uh-huh. Okay. So those are two of the big ones, right? Yeah. Right. Can it fall directly, like, into a lake or a oh. body of water? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Could a plant use it right away? A plant could trap it right away, absolutely. Could it store itself, like, right now, kind of in snow or ice for a while? Sure, absolutely. So there's lots of things it can do. Okay. But eventually it all works back to... Uh, it's going to start working its way like through rivers mm -hmm. and then down through lakes and then hopefully at some point towards the ocean, maybe. And then the sun comes out like we want. And when the sun comes out, you're going to have evaporation take place. Uh, another shun word. Evaporation yeah. uh, goes back up. Mm -hmm. And so, there's actually another one, too, in there. Uh, when plants, they actually kind of sweat a little bit through respiration. Trans they transpire, right? They transpire, yeah. And then if you combine that with evaporation, it's evapotranspiration? Yeah, we're throwing tons of words at oh, these we got some here. words for f with friends. You could really <laughs> stump them and get them good. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so a bunch of words in there. You guys have heard a lot of these before. We just wanted to kind of walk you through the entire process. Yep, that was a pretty quick one. I see do, though. That's a little word. Yeah. They need that one already. All right, next one. Kind of a confusing graph, but we'll walk you guys through it. So if you okay. take a look all the way to the left... Uh, you're going to see the total global water. Now, the majority of the water on Earth is actually in the oceans. Now, that's it, not good for us drinking. Yeah, you can't drink ocean water because it's so salty. It actually will dehydrate you. It'll pull water out of your body. Okay. Okay. So if you look at all the water on the Earth, 96.5% of it's oceans. Just that little sliver up top, 2.5% is fresh water. Wow. So just 25 is available for us to use for our uses. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So that breaks down into the middle chunk, right? Yep, so if we take that 2.5% and we see how that's broken down, mm -hmm. we can actually see that a lot of that's water we still can't even use easily. So like glaciers and ice caps, it's frozen water. So like 68% of that 2.5% is frozen. We can't really get to it. And most, yeah, most of the... People, most of the cities aren't going to be readily accessible to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what we're talking about today is with the groundwater. Groundwater that's, actually makes up 30% of chunk. the fresh water, so that 30% of 2.5%. That's the biggest chunk. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the last part, we only got about 1.3% that's surface water. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, we live near Lake Michigan, Big lake. and we think of fresh water as being lakes, rivers, streams, but it's only 1.3% of 2.5% of the total water on Earth. Doesn't Don't most of the people on Earth get their water from the ground and not from like a lake or exactly, river? Exactly, yeah. The majority of the water we use is from groundwater. We're really lucky to be near Lake Michigan okay. where it's actually some surface water we have that's nice. So most of it's groundwater, uh -huh. and then some of it is, again, ice and snow, things we you know that are seasonal, don't really have access to, and some are lakes. So biggest chunk that we need to know about groundwater. Groundwater is the biggest chunk that we're looking at today in terms of the fresh water on Earth, yeah. And that's our unit. Cool. All right. Hey, our unit. Hey, are you ready for a mastery check? Piece of cake. That one was pretty easy, okay? So we're just looking into some of the vocabulary that we had for mm -hmm. the hydrologic cycle, mm -hmm. and we're looking into why groundwater is important. Uh, if we go back to the slide of uh, showing how it interacts with all the different parts of the spheres. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking about, basically just talking about importance of groundwater as a freshwater reservoir. I'd say go back to the, the one we went through fast, the mm -hmm. cycle one, and just get the idea of how everything's connected. Cool. Easy enough. I think they'll be fine. Okay. Good luck, guys. Good luck. See you tomorrow.